Good morning, my brothers and sisters. A happy Sunday to you. Let me welcome you to a service for today. Let's take a moment and silence ourselves and get ready to worship God. Our opening hymn this morning is number 314 in the VIP, A Charge to Keep I Have. Hymn 314. continue with our call to worship. How great you are, Lord, for you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Oh, let us give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endureth forever. And together, how great thou art, O Lord. We would continue as we stand and sing 287 in the VIP, 287, O come and dwell in me. Continue with our opening prayers. Let
Let us go to God in prayer. How great thou art, O Lord. How majestic is your name above all the earth. Today, O God, we come because you are great and greatly to be praised. We come, O God, because you are worthy, and so we bow in reverence before you. Come and dwell in us, mighty and most powerful God. You are the God of yesterday, today, and forever. You are the God that changeth not. And so, dear God, we trust you where we cannot trace you. For we know, dear God, that you have caused us to stand. You have opened our ears and our eyes. You, dear God, has caused us from stumbling. And so, Holy Spirit, we bow. We say, come, Holy Spirit, come. You are mighty to deliver. You are mighty to save. And so, dear God, we adore you for who you are. We bow in reverence, celebrating this day, for this is the day that you have made as we all rejoice and be glad in it. Mighty and most powerful God, you, dear God, are awesome. You, dear God, are majestic. You, dear God, are all-powerful. Today, O oh God, we gather to worship only you. We gather, O oh God, to celebrate you. We gather, O oh God, to say how much we love you. And so we say, come take your rightful place in our lives. Holy Spirit, we know that you, who are always here with us, through the power of the living God, created us in your image and likeness, created us for who we are, created us, O oh God, for us to worship you. But for some reason or the other, O oh God, we have chosen our own path. We want to do what we feel like doing. And so, dear God, we have turned away from your presence. We have turned away from your guidance. We have turned away from you giving us that protection. Father God, we have recognized that we can do nothing in our own strength, that liberty and freedom comes from you. And so, dear God, we have returned to say, forgive us, O God. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and may you set us free. Give us a heart to praise you, O God, as you indwell us. And so as you cast the, our sins far as the east is from the west, we pray, dear God, that you will reunite us with each other and with the power of the living God. So Holy Spirit, take full control. We thank you this day for life. We can breathe. We can see each other's face. We can communicate, O oh God, and we can have laughter, for we are not an island or a man created to be all alone. So we thank you for this opportunity of gathering us in this chapel to worship you and to fellowship one with another. We gather, O oh God, to sing and to magnify your holy name, and for this we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for we have the liberty to praise you. We thank you we have the liberty to read your word. We thank you that we have the liberty that we can meet as a congregation. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Jesus who paid the price for us all. Jesus who set us free. Jesus, who will come once again, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you for the opportunity that you have given unto us by providing for us, by giving unto us, O oh God, the things we cannot do for our own selves. 
And so we thank you for food, clothing, and shelter. We thank you for good health and love that we can share one with another. Today, O oh God, may you have your way. And as we continue to thank you for this act of worship, may you fill our hearts, O oh God, with love. So as we worship you, O oh God, we are worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Have your perfect way. And as you continue to lead this worship, Lead us, O oh God, that we can find that joy and freedom in you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue our worship by the ministry of the word. And we'll read the collect together. Let us stand. Almighty God, you have great the Tiffany of sin and have sent the spirit of your son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to deliberate our freedom of your service, that we and all creation may be brought to a glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. Amen. Our responsive psalm this morning is Psalm 119, verses 105 to 112. Psalm 119, verses 105 to 112. We would read alternate verses. Your word is a lamp to my feet and light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe the righteous audience, ordinances. I have severely affected, give my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your ordinance. I hold my life in my hand, but I do not forget your laws. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your decrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statues forever to the end. And we stand for the Gloria. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our epistle reading is taken from Romans 8, verses 1 to 11. Romans 8, verses 1 to 11. Romans 8 chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and the death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of a sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned the sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us when a walk according to the flesh but not according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. Is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot and those who are in the flesh cannot please God.
But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. Since the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. My brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord. We continue with our gospel reading, which comes to us this morning from Matthew 13, 1 to 9, and 18 to 23, after which we we'll remain standing for the hymn 388, Stand Up and Bless the Lord. Matthew 13, 1 to 9, and 18 to 23. Brothers and sisters, a kindly stand for the gospel reading taken from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 to 9 and 18 to 23. Glory to you, O God. That same day, when, when Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sow went out to sow, and he sowed some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Verses 13, 18 says, Hear then the parable of the soul. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away. What is sown in the heart, this is what was sown on the path. As for what is sown on rocky grounds, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet, such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when troubles or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but, cares, but the cares of the world and the law of wealth choke the words, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields it one case, in one case a hundredfold, and another sixty, and another thirty. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of Christ. Let us.
continue standing as we sing hymn 388. Brothers and sisters, listening friends, I thank you for allowing us to come into your space. I trust God that as we continue to worship him, that you will be truly blessed as we share the good news. Let me thank the liturgists for this morning's worship, the readers and all those who have prepared this sanctuary and their hearts to worship God. Let us go to God in prayer. Speak to me, O God, as we listen to your word. May you, dear God, create a heart that as we receive your word, we will understand it. And so may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have just read the gospel. We have read the epistle. And all comes back to Romans chapter 8. Hearing of the word, doing of the word, and where does the heart, the word, bears fruit? You see, today, what the Lord has done in the lives of a person when they surrender their all to Jesus as their all in all. See what a total transformation the person looks like. Behavior and speech are totally different. This can only happen when the Spirit takes residence from the moment free salvation indwells by the Holy Spirit. Today, our worship, our theme comes from there is freedom in the Spirit. There is freedom in the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, when the, lip, when the Spirit comes, He comes like a rushing wind. When the Spirit comes and indwells us, from that moment, salvation is full and free. When he comes, he does abide with the good new believer forever. When the Spirit of God comes into a life, 
our being made new. We live a newness of life. It is this new life Paul has been reminding us in Romans that in our natural self, we are sinners under the wrath of God. That we cannot save ourselves by our religious rites or rituals and that the true salvation is the product of God's grace alone. For Ephesians says, for by grace are ye saved through faith and nothing else. Paul describes the life of sin, the life of religious works, the life lived under the law, how each of these falls short, far from being able to save the souls of man and turn his attention to the new life in the Spirit of God. Brothers and sisters, freedom of the Spirit. Our text in today's Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 4, assures us that we can be set free in the Spirit. New life comes through the Spirit of God. Paul declares, you are set free. Free from what? Free from the bondage of sin and death. You and I cannot work our way into righteousness, nor sacrificing others for our sins. In Micah, God asks of his people to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with him. These the Lord requires of us. Brothers and sisters, there is no only on, there is no other way apart from the way of surrendering our all to Jesus. Justice, love, and humility requires of us today if we are going to live this life of freedom. Let us examine ways we can experience freedom of the Spirit. Verse 1 in Romans 8, 1 tells us, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that love God. You see, to love God is to have a passion for him. To love God is to love him with our whole being, that burning desire to show passion that he is our God and God alone. To love God is a burning desire with your whole being. Hence, there is no fault. God has made a promise. This is a promise given that we are saved from God's wrath when we love him. When we love him in mind, in heart, and in soul. When we love God and no one else, we are no longer lost in sin. We no longer walk the sinner's path. We no longer breathe the breath of condemnation and doomed to eternity of hell, according to John 3, 36. But when we come to Jesus, by faith we are delivered from the threat of divine retribution and are delivered from the darkest hell. There is a promise and so there is also a place for Jesus made a promise and he offers that place. In Christ alone, can we only be found a different in heart? Can we only be found a different in mind and soul? For Jesus only makes the difference. No one else can, no one else does. No matter how much man may say they love you, only Jesus can make that difference in our lives. No matter our position in life, how long we are in the church. You see, brothers and sisters, you and I can be in the church and still die a lost soul. We can be a caring neighbor and die a lost soul. We can spend all day in reading and all day in prayer 
and die a lost soul. Church, what makes the difference is when you and I, when we all are in Jesus, we are saved to the utmost. In Jesus, Jesus is the only refuge for the soul of man. He is the harbor light where we can find salvation, where we can find forgiveness, where we can find hope and everlasting life. To know Jesus is to be a partaker of life's eternal, according to 1 John 5, verse 12. Paul is saying to us that those who believe, those who trust Jesus, will walk under his leadership of the Holy Spirit and will not be controlled by the flesh, Brothers and sisters, when we look around and we see the lifestyle of our young, the lifestyle of our world at large, indeed we know that they are controlled by the flesh. This, however, does not say that we are perfect when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We need to have the watchword, and that is to stay in humility but the Lord will be in the process as he perfect us for there is no condemnation to us to those who love God when we are set free from sin we are set free from the bondage in the life of sin there is law therefore the people who are lost sinners people of the flesh who allow sin to control their being. They are under the control of the master of the flesh, the world and the devil, according to Ephesians 2, verses 1 to 3. If you have never trusted Jesus as your Savior, you have no control of your own life. You are being controlled by sin, and there is no right judgment which affect them in different ways. Some are led into lives of unimaginable wickedness and evil beyond control. Some are churchgoers but are not experiencing any relationship with God. They are in good standing, yet they are caught up caught up in the darkness of life. Brothers and sisters, this is a wretched experience, yet so many around the world take pleasure in it. In the life of the Spirit, changes take place. When Jesus enters into a life, a life that was marred yesterday, a life that was marred, everything changes now in Jesus himself and by the power of the Holy Spirit, abilities are given stand against the terrible, to stand against the terrible act of the devil and the world that fights and terrorize the souls of man. People are set free, chains are broken, relationships of family are restored, you can rejoice in Christ when new life begins. To live a new life in Christ is to give your all to Jesus. Romans 6, 6 to 7, Jesus has given us the tool. We need to live holy lives for his glory. Put on the old armor for Christians. The secret lies in using the tools. Jesus has given us and the learning to say no to sin, but yes to the Spirit. When was the last day we feel the tugging? When was the last day we say, into my heart, come into my heart? For we know that we wrestle not against physical people, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. We are set free from sin set free from bondage, and we can be set free from sickness. There is a weakness of the law. 
The word of God says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Anyone who fails to put their full trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior is sick in sin. Let us see what is happening in our world today. But I can assure you, the day is coming for those who want to be God and to define who God is and what God should do. When a person reaches this stage in life, they try everything they think would make them feel better or to recover because deep within, they are hurting. They have pride and they fail to surrender their all to him. You see, their own remedies sometimes can work in the physical body. However, those who are afflicted spiritually, the only remedy or cure is found in verse 3 of Romans 8. We aren't safe from sin. Sorry holds by knowing the commandment of God because we don't keep them away. But God puts into effect a different plan to save us. He sent his son Jesus to set the sickness, the sickles free. His son, through the spirit, indwells us and his power destroys sin's control. Verse 3 makes it clear, where the law fails, where the law is weak, Christ, through his death and resurrection, prevails. In fact, the law only points out how sinful we, we are. Jesus provides a cure for sickness by the stripes, his stripes, we are healed. Brothers and sisters, be assured, God is at work. Verse 4 says, now we can obey God's law if we follow the Holy Spirit. When we are in Jesus, when we are saved and made whole, righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us. We are declared righteous by God himself at work and so we are justified according to Romans 5 verse 1. In and through Jesus, we are made exactly as we should be. Only to please him, only to worship him, only to glorify him, only to honor his holy name. Today, Christ sees you as being righteous as he is when, you're, when you come to him. There is no separation from Christ. In the beginning, verse 1 says, there is no condemnation. And in closing, we say, there is no separation. When we come to Jesus Christ, he clings to us. He holds on to us and he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And therefore, in closing, I say, freedom begins only in Christ, the life of God. Freedom is the newness in heart, mind, soul. Freedom is not given by anyone, only through Christ, who comes to offer salvation for you and for me. This is the freedom of spirit. The freedom of spirit sets you free from sin. The freedom of spirit sets you free from the bondage. The freedom of spirit sets you free from sicknesses. Today, I invite you, if you have not yet received Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can begin to receive your freedom in spirit today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Mighty Redeemer, you have come, O God, to save the human race. 
You said, O oh God, that freedom begins through and in your word. You said freedom is when we come to you acknowledging that you are Lord and Savior and we surrender our all to you. Freedom is to love you with all our heart, mind, and soul. And so today I place before you all those, O oh God, who have given their lives to you, who have said they have had enough and they want the Spirit to lead, guard, and direct. And so, dear God, they are setting themselves free from the burden of sin, from the burden of bondage, from the burden of sickness. And they're saying, come into my heart and make me free. Freedom begins in the mind, O oh God. And as they think of you, as they worship you, let them begin to see the newness of heart, the newness of life. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we continue as we sing the hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. If we are indeed free, if we are indeed set free, if we are indeed at liberty, let us stand up and tell the world, we are standing for Jesus. Let us go to God in prayer as we quiet ourselves for our prayers of intercession. Let us think of those persons who are sick, those who are sick in mind, those who are sick in their emotions, those who are sick physically, those who are sick in many other ways, O oh God, we bring them before you. For you are the one who can give liberty, no matter how much and what we are going through. You are the liberator. For you said freedom begins in the mind. And so if we tell ourselves that we are trusting God for who he is, for delivering us, he will do it because of the faith we have. And so, dear God, we pray that you liberate those who are sick emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. Release them, O oh God, from the bondage of sin. Because, O oh God, they say they want to accept you. They want to walk the walk and talk the talk that you have called them to. Today, O oh God, it's a day as they journey with you. They would find that freedom. They would find that sweet relief. For there is no one else or nothing else than to find that joy in Christ Jesus. Today, O oh God, we just want to lift before you those who are sick. Many, O oh God, are sick among us. But there is no sign of sickness. And so we pray, O oh God, that as you touch that those who are sick, that those who are strong but still are sick, you were able to liberate them too. Into your hand, O oh God, we place the caretakers, we place the nurses and the doctors who are at, ment at the mental hospital. Father God, I pray that you will continue to grant unto them the concerns that they have is to take care of those who are sick. You have given them the responsibility. And so no matter what their shortcomings, help them, O oh God, to put the patients first. Today, O oh God, we thank you for our children and young people. Those, dear God, who have just graduated from the secondary school and are about to enter A-levels. For some, they will be going job hunting. O oh God, may you open the doors and grant unto them that freedom. Grant unto them, O oh God, that way that they can continue to trust you where they cannot trace you. Father, you know their situation. You know what many of them are going through. And so we pray that you meet their needs. Remember our little ones, those who are in primary school, preschool, and kindergarten. Holy Spirit, as they are about to be on break, that you will continue to guide and keep them, that you will continue to watch over them, 
that you will continue to be their God, their eyes and their hands and their feet, so that they can be safe around those at home or those who are placed in, their, in charge of them. Today, O oh God, we celebrate your life in the midst of setting your people free. We celebrate the life and the strength you have given to our little ones. And so today, O oh God, we pray that you have your way in and through their lives. Today, O oh God, we lift before you our church. Our church, dear God, are in need of you. Our church, O oh God, is crying out. Our church, dear God, need that individual and personal experience. As they encounter you, O oh God, they will be set free to worship you in spirit and in truth. They will be set free, O oh God, to love you with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. They will be set free, O oh God, to go out into the highways and the byways and to call men and women unto you, to let them know that there is a better way in life, and that is to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh. Sanctify. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh. Let your will be done in each and every lives. Let your will be done in those, O oh God, who need to have a further experience and encounter with you. Today, O oh God, we say, have your way in this place. Have your way in the lives of those, dear God, who are listening to us. Loving God, may you meet their needs. May you cover them under your precious blood. May you, dear God, let them feel that assurance that you will never leave them nor forsake them. No matter their situation, O oh God, as they call upon you, you will be right there to answer them. Your answer may be yes, no, or wait a while. Give them the patience, O oh God, to wait. Give them the patience, O oh God, to see you in all that they do. No matter what, they may encounter your experience with them. Journeying God, you have journeyed with us. As we are coming, O oh God, to the end of another church year and the beginning of another, May you, dear God, fill us with the compassion. Fill us, O oh God, with the things we need to do as we journey with you and the people here on earth. Lord God, you surround us. You continue to protect us. You continue to guard and to guide us. Let your will be done. Today, O oh God, as we celebrate your Holy Spirit in our lives, working in and through us, for there is no liberty when we are out of the spirit. There is no liberty when we are walking in the flesh. There is no liberty when we are going after the world. And so as we surrender, may you, dear God, continue to set us free, to deliver us, and to let your will be done in and through your name, who taught us as a family when we pray together, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we bring our worship to a close as we sing hymn 155, O oh, let the power fall on me.
Let us go to God in prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us as we breathe your breath of fresh liberty, as we breathe, O oh God, your breath of no condemnation, as we breathe your breath of no separation, as we go, O oh God, go with us. Strengthen us and empower us to do your will here on earth. This we pray in Jesus' name. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen and amen.